welcome to Kingdom Concepts. So blessed to have you with us in the studio today. Looking forward, amen, to continuing this beautiful series that we've been doing on the battle mm. of the mind. Mm. But before we do that, we want to ask that if you've been enjoying this program to please like and subscribe to this, amen, so that way every Monday when we release our new episodes, amen, you'll be there to start your week, amen, having a message from us, amen, mm -hmm. that's going to empower you, amen, to uh, be equipped, amen, to have a great, strong family, great, strong leadership, amen, as well as this will help you to fire up that passion that you have for Jesus Christ. Amen. So we love you and we thank you for being with us today. Today we're going to continue to talk about spiritual warfare. But we're zeroing in on this area of warfare where battles are won and lost. Mm -hmm. And that is the, the battle of the mind. And we've talked about, you know, in past episodes who the enemy is, the weapons that God's given us against that enemy. And we've talked about where the battleground is, one of the greatest battlegrounds, which is the mind. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, today, we're going to take it into a place where we're dealing with strongholds. Amen. Uh, what those are, how to identify them, because you can't remove something if you don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. And so if you brought your uh, Bibles, amen, grab a notebook, grab a pen. Uh, you're going to want to take some notes, amen. You're probably going to want to come back and watch this episode again, because this is material that is going to help you to have victory, amen, in every area of your life, amen. And that is what our desire is, for you to have victory, amen, for old things to pass away and everything become new in your life. So we're going to begin by going to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, and we're going to read verses 3 through 5. Mm. And uh, if you can go there, my love, and then uh, I'm going to read it. Uh, in the Amplified Translation after you. So. Three through five. Let me get my All right. little glasses here. Again, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 through 5. Um, King James? Yeah. All righty. Here we go. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So notice he says right here, we know that since our enemy, amen, we war not against flesh and blood, it says in Ephesians chapter 6. And we also see right here that the weapons of our warfare, <laughs> they're not carnal either because our enemy isn't. But notice right here it says that God has given us these weapons, amen, that through him we can pull down strongholds. And that's what we want to zero in today is pulling down strongholds, amen. And strongholds have a lot to do with the way that you think. And that's why the Bible tells us in the same portion of Scripture that we're to cast down imaginations and every evil thing, every high thing that would try to lift itself above the Word of God. And that you have to grab every thought and bring it into the captivity of Christ. You have to bring every thought to the Word of God and ask mm -hmm. this simple question. What does God say about this? Mm -hmm. And that's something you and I learned very early yes. in our walk with God is uh, if we had a, a way that we were thinking or a way that we were feeling or the, a way that we were reasoning things, we would always ask each other, well, what does the Bible say? Mm -hmm. You know, can I read this to you really quick in the, the Passion Translation? Yeah, absolutely. Just the last part, just the verse four, it says, um, well, I'll just, for the, although we live in the natural realm, we don't wage a military campaign employing human weapons. Using manipulation to achieve our aims, instead, our spiritual weapons are energized with divine power to, di I love this part, to effective, effectively dismantle the defenses mm. behind which people hide. We can demolish every deceptive fantasy. Mm, I on. love that, you know. I love how that says that. Yeah, because you know what? I mean, Satan Satan tries to work with your head. He tries, when it comes to the battle of the mind, he always tries to get in a movie going in your head. Mm -hmm. You know, he, 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 he tries getting you to build something in your head. Yes. And this is the way sin takes place a lot of times is he gives you a thought and then you start building on that thought. And you go with it. People yeah. just go with it. Well, yeah. like when it comes to adultery, you know, uh, it's not that somebody wakes up and goes, oh, I'm going to cheat on my spouse. The devil gives them a thought of them being with someone other than their spouse. And then that thought, if they think, you know, he gets them to think about it more often. Now it goes from being a thought to where now it's a meditation. You know, they're thinking about it often. And then it goes from being uh, a meditation to where it becomes an obsession to where all they can think about is what they've been mm -hmm. seeing in their head, them being with this other person, the things that they would do and all of this stuff. 
and to where eventually that obsession demands action. Mm -hmm. That's how people sin. Yeah. It's Satan coming to the mind because the Bible says that, you know, uh, you know, in the book of Genesis, the Tower of Babel, the Lord said that the people are when there's nothing that they can imagine to do that they can't do. And mm -hmm. so you have people that there's things that they build in their head and they carry those things out. And so it's important for us, amen, to get victory in our mind so that we can have victory in our lives. In the Amplified Bible, it says this in 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3 you know, through 5. It says, for though we walk and live in the flesh, we are not carrying on our warfare mm -hmm. according to the flesh and using mere human weapons. Let me tell you something. You have mighty weapons through God. And he says right here, for the weapons of our warfare are not physical weapons of flesh and blood, but they are mighty mm. before God for the overthrow and the destruction of strongholds. Mm -hmm. That's what we want to do, strongholds. We want to identify strongholds that may be in our soulish realm, in our mind, in our will, in our emotions. And once we identify those things, man, we want to destroy them, amen? Not mm -hmm. tolerate them, mm -hmm. not shrink them but destroy them. And the only way that we can do that is if we do what this next verse says and we take every thought into the captivity of Christ. Amen. It's so important. Amen. And you may be asking yourself today, you know, what is a stronghold? You know, how, how can I be set free from something if I don't even know what it is? So I can tell you this. If you're struggling with a repeated behavior, that, you know, something that you're born again and you have this behavior, you have this thing that you keep doing, but you hate it, you could be dealing with a stronghold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you you know that God forgave you, but you're struggling with forgiving somebody else and, and you, you keep on lashing out at this person because they did you wrong before. Uh, you know, it could be a stronghold or maybe, you know, you're angry all the time and you know and you don't know why it's just you 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 yell at people <laughs> you treat people bad and then you feel bad about it later on it could be a stronghold or maybe there's something that's happened in your life to where you don't trust people mm -hmm. to where you don't trust anybody even if they've shown over time that they are trustworthy you still don't trust them it could be that you have a stronghold amen so it's important for us to identify strongholds so we can tear them down a lot of times people don't even know that they have them and a lot of times they have not recognized that uh, something happens and they regress you know to their own nature something a memory a a, a particular person mm -hmm. um, an action sometimes even something that they watch on television mm -hmm. it triggers something that that they they regress back or they they go back into their old nature not realizing that that particular area is is you know they see somebody being abused on television or a, or a child being hurt or something and it's just like something happens and they they go back into that old nature not realizing there's something there mm -hmm. that is causing a stronghold you can't go a, a stronghold makes it to where it's a it's a, it's a barrier you can't go past that you can't go forward and mm -hmm. we have to break down stronghold in order for us to go forward in the things of Christ. Yeah, because the Lord's supposed to be our stronghold, right. our strong tower. And sometimes there's things that are there that uh, it's not even like a, something that somebody, like you doing something to me, mm -hmm. but it could be something that somebody did to me in the past. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you have memory association to where it's like, oh, this seems Triggers. familiar. This is, yeah. you know, and, and, and you go with it, you know, again, strongholds and these are areas where satan will try to manipulate because once he comes into your mind mm -hmm. and, and then he starts putting these these fortresses up these spiritual fortresses of wrong thinking and that wrong thinking causes wrong behavior once he gets that all built and made strong in your mind then he goes after your emotions to where mm -hmm. now your emotions are tied to that thought to where if that thought makes you you know, sad, you're always sad, you know, and, and then it, he gets strongholds into your will, you know, to where, you know, nobody can bring you out of that, you know, you're yeah. just, you're always crying and, and you don't want help, you don't want comfort, or sometimes it might be a stronghold of despair to where, depression. you know, yeah, to where you're just stuck in this place to where you don't think you're loved, nobody cares about you, and that's the thought that's always strong in your mind. And then what happens? It bleeds over into having a stronghold in your emotions mm -hmm. to where you have emotional failure 
you know, you feel like you're worth nothing, you know, and everything you do, it's not good enough. And then your will's involved to where you, you're looking for reasons to live, you know, and would anybody miss you if you were gone? Those are things that come through ungodly strongholds. But let's talk about strongholds for a second here. Strong's Concordance says this about strongholds, that it's a place that has been fortified so as to protect it against an attack. It also means a place where a particular cause or belief is strongly defended or upheld. It's a spiritual fortress. Check this out. It's a spiritual fortress of wrong thoughts mm. and lies that challenge the truth about what God has revealed about himself. You know, strongholds are areas that have been fortified. So you can have godly strongholds and ungodly strongholds. Yes. You can have a thought, you know, uh, that's in you that is off, you know, to where you don't trust nobody or, or maybe uh, you have a stronghold where, you know, maybe you were raised in racism and, and you think that if people aren't your race, then they're evil or they're no good. Oh, yeah. You know, you'll defend that belief. You know, you'll, you'll, you'll fight for that belief because it's something that has become a stronghold. It's fortified. It's like that thought cannot be challenged, you know. And, uh, and so it's important for us to, to see these things for what they are, you know. And again, it's a place where a particular cause or belief is strongly defended. You know, you, you can see this in people's lives, yeah, you know. Yeah, and only through Christ and changing only. the way you think, changing your mind, do you come up out of that? Because mm -hmm. you can believe something so strongly and you have, you know, it's been ingrained in you, it's been taught to you, it's been lived by you, it's been amplified, it's been, you know, everybody you know, that's an example of who they are. Mm -hmm. This is the way we think, you know, this is the way we think. And then all of a sudden you have truth coming out in your face, you know, mm -hmm. truth coming to your face and you have to understand, wait a minute, this is how I believe but this is what truth says. And truth comes out of the word of God. Yes. So you always have to make sure that truth um, changes what you believe, you know, because yeah. you can believe one way, but truth says, truth, which is the word of God, mm -hmm. is this. So you change the way you believe, and that means that your stronghold has to come down. Yeah, because you can, you know, because you have people that have strongholds where it's a lie. Yeah. And they'll defend yes. that lie with everything that's in them. Yes. Um, and, and again, it's just the enemy coming in and deceiving people and then and allowing these places of deception or these this wrong way of thinking to become a solid way of life, you know, that they have. Um, if you're taking notes, write this down. Here's, a, here's another definition of what a stronghold is. It's a satanic lie. <laughs> That's what a stronghold is. It's a satanic lie. It's a generational mindset or a human wounding that you've listened to. Listen, that you've listened to long enough to where now it's gone from being something you've heard to being something that is a part of you. Amen. To where you've listened to it long enough. You've believed it strongly enough and you've owned it deeply enough that it becomes part of your identity mm. to where you see yourself mm. as this person this way and uh it also means that it has a for it that it's fortified itself in you amen when you have a stronghold that thing becomes so solid and so 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 much a part of you that it dictates the way that you think mm -hmm. about people places and things uh it dictates to you what your belief system is it dictates to you what kind of actions you're going to have when you come into situations reactions and yeah your reactions how you react to people mm -hmm. it can all be traced back to these areas that you have allowed to become fortified ways of thinking and unless you deal with that you know um, you're going to find yourself in a place where basically what it is is uh, when you have demonic strongholds, it's an unholy filter that you have in your life to where you you filter out what is truth to hold on to a lie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we have to come to the word of God to bring those strongholds down. Amen. And I've again, I've known people like that where oh, you it's horrible. It's, it's truth is in their face. They're. They can, you know, everybody around them can see truth. Everybody around them can see that what they're doing is sin, is a lie because they're, they're, but it, they're just so blinded. They're just so, so blinded by, by hate or malice or, or, you know, wrong thinking. And there is no way to get around them unless their mind is renewed 
and they begin to see things out of the mind of Christ. You know? well, well, if you really trace it to its root, what it becomes is it becomes pride. Mm. And pride always comes before a That's fall. So it, it's it's yes, a belief right. system that sets you up for a fall. And when you believe a lie so strong, uh, you know, and again, you can be faced with truth and and you'll still hold on to it, even though, you know, uh, it, it's wrong. And, and, and this is the, this is what I'd say. Pride is like bad breath. You know, um, <laughs> everyone knows you have it, but you don't. You know, and that's the way it is when you have wrong thinking. People know, man, that's it, that's not true. That's not right. You know, but people will hold mm -hmm. on to that with all that they have. Mm -hmm. You know, and basically what pride means, and uh, Dr. Mark Barclay, a good friend of ours, a father in the faith, one of the things that he told us, you know, when it came to pride, he said the definition of pride is simply this. You're on your own and you don't listen. Hmm. You're on your own and you don't listen. It's basically when you set aside the word of God and everyone wow. else and everything else for you to do what you want to do. And and it's and again, th these are areas that really damage Gosh, folks that, so much. That really, when you look back and you think of, yeah, you're right. Like you're on your own and you don't listen. Yeah, because you're you're just stuck to it. And the just only thing that can them people, like yeah, you know, the slap ministry, you know, <laughs> slap some sense into fo some folks. But you know, there was times when we had strongholds. Yeah, absolutely. We, we we definitely weren't void of it. You know, uh, ah, but I told you about yours. <laughs> yeah, Eliana <laughs> could see my stronghold so well, but you know, and usually that's the way it is. People can see the moat in somebody else's eye, but they can't see the plank that's in their own. It's it's easy. To, to see where other people need to change and, and not ourselves it, isn't sometimes. Isn't it funny that when we got saved, uh, one of the one of our favorite scriptures is uh, pl um, Plank Eye. The plank Eye. <laughs> We'd call each other Plank Eye. And to us, you know, it was a scripture that talked about how uh, pull the pull the moat out of your own eye. Yeah, so the speck. Could, yeah, pull the moat out of your, pull the speck out of your brother's eye so that you can see clearly to see to pull the, the beam. moat, the beam out of your own eye. <laughs> So, so we'd always be like this, oh, watch out, man. <laughs> you almost hit me. <laughs> when um, we were trying to tell each other what to do. Yeah, because so. sometimes you don't see things. Yeah. And so strongholds are something that you have to recognize because you can't bring it down if you don't recognize that it's there. Mm -hmm. And the, I, when think I, I quote, wait, I think I quoted that since that scripture just came. It said, pull the, pull the beam out of your own eye so you may see clearly to pull the speck out of your brother's eye. Yeah. yeah and, so I had and to so, fix that one right there. You know, and, and so it is important. I mean, because, and this is the thing, is that when you love people, when God sets you free, you're mm -hmm. going to want to help other people get set free, you know, because there's nothing new under the sun. There is no stronghold that maybe you have right now that you're dealing with that somebody else hasn't dealt with, you know. But you have to come to a place to where, as, you know, like for you and I being pastors and, and you know, mentors and, you know, uh, fathers and mother to the faith of people, you know, we've had to come to a place where we love people so much to where we would rather hurt them with truth than protect them with a lie. Mm -hmm. Because, I hate doing that oh, though sometimes. It, it's it's, just, but you, you have to help yeah. people to see where something is wrong or they'll never fix it, you know. And so when it comes to strongholds, again, you have to identify what they are and you have to really take an inventory of why do you believe what you believe? You know, um, why do you feel the way that you feel? Why do you react the way that you react? You know, you have to go to the root and find out what, where did that start and, and sh is it justifiable? Mm -hmm. What does God say about it? But I want to take a moment just to switch gears here for the next few minutes, you know, and talk about four common entry points that the enemy uses in building a stronghold in your mind. And there's a lot of different things that we could say about this, but I want to just focus on four things that are used uh, so many times as an entrance to mm -hmm. Satan beginning to establish a stronghold. Because you're not born with them. There's something that you begin to build and you, and you allow them mm -hmm. to become stronger. But the first one, I would say, is when you've been wounded. When you have unhealed wounds. Mm -hmm. You know, this is... This is something that that's taken place. Maybe maybe you were betrayed, you know, and man, it just cuts you so deep. Well, you'll create a stronghold to where you don't trust people now. You could because you don't want to feel that again. Yeah, you know, and and so it, the, your attitude is well, if I don't let people get close to me, then they'll never hurt that's me right. like that. Mm -hmm. And so now you have a stronghold that affects every relationship yep. that you have. Yes, yes, yes. You you you, you marry someone, but you don't trust them. 
you go to a yes. you go to a church but you don't trust the preacher you read the bible but you don't trust god's word and and so those are strongholds and so you know that's a big area where people have been wounded and it's still it's not healed and you, and when it's not healed in one area yeah you, you don't you you open yourself up for it to be every area like you said mm -hmm. you, it's not just oh i don't trust men it's everybody, everybody, and, and you don't, it doesn't stop there. So, yeah, it, ha yeah. it grows. That it grows. stronghold grows. Another area, an entry point for strongholds is unconfessed sin. You know, when there's sin in your life, you know, you, you open a door to the devil, you open a door to demons, and you'll come to a place to where, and I've seen this even in believers' lives, to where they start justifying. Yes. Mm -hmm. the error that they hold to you know they justify that it's okay for them to you know, like not tithe you know uh it's okay to steal for, even though the bible says it's stealing they justify that it's god's okay with me doing this mm -hmm. you know and they'll justify that sin and um and, and once you begin to yield to that kind of a sin then it becomes a habit and that habit becomes a stronghold mm -hmm. you know or if you think that it's okay for you to uh you know, to, to treat people bad, mm -hmm. you know, or to uh, lie, or, yeah, or to, to lie. steal. It's just a little bit. Oh, they're not gonna. They don't need it. They have more money than me, so they're not gonna notice if I just take this. You know, they mm -hmm. have a lot of those. You know, um, I can just tell this lie. You know, they, it doesn't matter. It's not gonna affect anything. It's just those little things that become a stronghold, be mm -hmm. and it becomes an entry into other things. Yeah, sin. Sin. I'm telling you, it it it's an entry way for a stronghold. It can it can change the way that you view everything mm -hmm. the bible mm -hmm. says a little yeast will work through the whole batch it's like people that start thinking that god's okay with them getting drunk and it starts off with i just want a little glass of wine and then a glass turns to a bottle and a bottle turns into a weekend in cancun <laughs> you know or in las vegas <laughs> you know what i'm saying to where a stronghold's there and then you'll begin to fight people about how right it is for you to be a drunkard uh -huh. even though the bible says not to be so these are entry points, amen, that can cause a stronghold to be established. A third one is if you've been involved in the occult. And I'm not just talking about, you know, you were a demon worshiper, a devil worshiper, but sometimes it can be through tarot cards, it can be through Ouija boards. It's you opening yourself up to the spirit realm and even being in a place, if you've ever been someone that was a, you know, a tarot card reader or what have you, these are areas where you can establish strongholds in how you think about mm -hmm. spiritual mm -hmm. things to where you can justify, you know, seeking demonic uh, involvement in getting answers or things. But you you believe that there's a difference between white magic and black magic, mm -hmm. you know, Glenn did the good witch. Um, what's the other one? The witch, witch of the East. I don't yeah, know. Right. <laughs> so so if you've been involved in the occult, I'm telling you, these are entrances four strongholds these are entry points amen to where if you've been exposed to that you can set things up to where you view god and the things of god from a slanted perspective and then the fourth thing that i was saying this is a huge one and we'll probably get into some of this stuff a little bit more as we talk about strongholds well, in the too, next yeah. episode but toxic family that's a big one what you've been raised in is usually what you will live out. That's right. And and we've learned this, that what you normalize, you can't get free mm -hmm. from. If you were raised in a home where you're used to seeing your mom and dad running through the house throwing pots and pans at each other, you know, that it was normal for, you know, you to wake up in the morning, your mom's cooking your breakfast with black eyes. Let me tell you something. If you think that's normal, you're going to find yourself marrying somebody that will do the same thing to you. Or you know? will do it to them. Yeah, and it becomes a stronghold. If you were raised and you were taught that wives submit to your husbands and demand it, then you'll do the same thing when you get married. No, or if you're a daughter, you're going to submit yourself to a man that will treat you just like your daddy. So these are things that create strongholds. These are just four main areas that we've seen. Amen. So I don't know what you've been having to go through, but I know God's helped us pull down a lot of strongholds yeah, in our Yeah, and we're going to show you how to pull them down next episode. Yes. So make sure you come back and watch. But we want to pray for you right now. Amen. Just put your hands over your heart. Heavenly Father, we just pray right now, Lord, for every stronghold, Lord, to be identified and every stronghold to be brought down in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, Lord, bring every thought, every pattern. Lord, what we've been raised in, Lord, what we've been taught, Lord, the things, Lord, that we've created for ourselves, Lord, those areas that are off limits to change and they're hurting us and they're hurting others. Identify those things right now, Lord. And give us the strength, Lord, and give us the word, Lord, your word, Lord, to help pull those things down, Lord, to where we are no longer captive to those thoughts, 
or to that behavior. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. I pray that you enjoyed this episode. Again, if you're liking Kingdom Concepts, please like and subscribe to it so we can be with you guys again with a new episode this Monday. God bless. We'll see you guys later.